Hey guys, we're doing another D cell shading video. Today we're gonna work on the VHS animated X-Men Mr. Sinister. So the first Mr. Sinister came out years ago and I think overall it was pretty well received. And then this one came out as I think one of the first two of the VHS animated wave. Let's take a look at the first one. Overall, I think this was pretty well liked. Uh, it does appear as he looks in the comics, at least with one particular uh, version of his costume, which this is still pretty close to what he does look like normally. But part of the reason why uh, we are doing the decel shading is because I have read that some people feel like this one uh, color-wise is actually a little bit closer to how he should appear in the comic books. And so, but we'll just do a quick side by side. And so uh, left hand side is the VHS animated one, right hand side is the uh, first release. And so we can see that they're the same exact mold. And then obviously it's really just the, the color of the plastics uh, slash paint job that are different. So in terms of doing the decel shading, uh, we can see that it's primarily this gray that we have uh, all over the body. So we have it uh, across here, we have it on the torso, uh, especially right here. We have it on both arms, we have some on the belt and on the cuffs, and then we have it going down the legs uh, pretty much the whole way. And so uh, as far as this one goes, this one should be pretty straightforward because uh, the only pieces on this body that aren't this blue plastic are gonna be the cuffs, uh, the belt, and then the head itself. So we won't need to worry too much about messing up any paint except for a couple of spots. So the spots where you wanna keep an eye out are gonna be the diamond right here. And then when we tackle the shading that's on the hair, we do wanna be careful of the diamond there too. And lastly, we do wanna remove the shading from up here as well. And so in order to do that, uh, I have an additional tool for today's video. So uh, to start with, we are again using our Windsor and Newton brush cleaner and restore. This has been amazing. If you haven't seen the other videos where I've used it already, uh, please also check those out. Uh, and then we have cotton swabs, of course. We also have pointed cotton swabs for more detailed areas. We have a bowl of water, uh, an empty bowl just in case, a paper towel, and the new tool that we have today is Tamiya masking tape. So this was recommended to me by one of my viewers, Lost in Wallace, who is actually an artist and has some pretty cool stuff, so you should check that out. I'll link them down below. And so the idea of this is that this masking tape uh, will just do that, it'll mask. So I'm gonna place this over uh, the diamond and then I'm gonna place it over uh, the diamond on his forehead as well. And this should help protect in case I accidentally go over those spots and prevent it from getting things messed up. And so while you could possibly use regular masking tape, uh, I figured I'd go for an actual product designed for uh, action figures that Tamiya is usually uh, making products for models and plastic models and things like that. So um, I figured uh, this is probably a better idea, but feel free to use whatever you want. But this is my recommendation for now. Okay, so there are the two spots that I am worried about covered up. And then I probably will end up uh, covering the neck as well when I uh, go after this, but I just wanted to show you that first. So one last thing as well is that, so the, uh, the black on here, on his cape, is actually painted on, and we do want to avoid removing the paint from that. So um, again, you can see that the, the plastic is blue, and then this is painted. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so here's a quick side-by-side, -side, left leg and right leg. Left leg is completely done, right leg still has the shading on. Came off pretty easy overall. The uh, thigh was a little bit harder to remove than the rest of it. Um, this might be a slightly different plastic. Uh, still relatively easy, uh, not nearly as bad as uh, what I've had to deal with on different figures, um, but just something to keep in mind. So I'm gonna knock this out and then we'll move on.
Okay, here are the legs, both complete. You can see that the, the thighs and then the pelvis here kind of seems a little bit duller than the rest of it. In my Cyclops video, people some people did say that uh, Cyclops looked a little bit duller. It didn't look that much duller to me, but uh, this area on Sinister does. But the legs actually still look good. And so I suspect that it has more to do with the uh, the difference in the type of plastic used here than in here. I think the legs are probably made with a plastic that makes it a little bit easier to bend because you are trying to pose the character and uh, the torso and then uh, the pelvis and then the thighs are probably a slightly harder plastic um, that uh, doesn't take as well to the chemical as the other stuff does. So that's something to keep in mind. It's been recommended to me to use a uh, like a clear coat to kind of bring back that shine. If that's something that's interesting to you that you'd like to see me do, then please let me know in the comments below. Um, otherwise, I'm going to just kind of keep at it and show you the rest of it. Okay, so torso pretty much done. This one was pretty difficult, actually. The reason why it was difficult was because uh, Mr. Sinister is just way too ripped. Uh, he works out way too hard. He's got too many grooves that the paint is really down into. I ended up needing to actually pull out the paintbrush to really get into the grooves of his abs. And then even his, like, his ribs uh, were kind of difficult. And then on top of all of that, you can see that uh, even this area is just the same as this in terms of the luster kind of being gone from it. It's definitely much more matted than it is glossy. left arm done uh, not too bad not too much uh the luster is gone uh it is reduced but not nearly as bad as i think the torso is the other thing too to keep in mind is that the grooves in the arms uh the paint is definitely in there too so i did have to use a pointed uh, cotton swab to try to get in there as well as i could and i think it came out pretty good overall uh, with getting it out but a thing to keep in mind so i'm gonna finish the other arm and then uh, tackle the shoulders. So I just want to show the uh, the right arm uh, with the cell shading removed. However, I didn't get into the grooves of it. I just want to show you on camera how uh, it looks. Uh, it actually kind of looks kind of nice because uh, it does give it a little bit of extra definition. Uh, but depending on what you're going for, with it fully removed here or with it just in the grooves, then that'll be up to you. Okay, everything uh, removed now from the from the main body, and you can definitely see the luster is gone on the shoulder pads uh, in a pretty major way. I would say you can see right here on this corner where I didn't uh, hit it at all with the chemical how shiny it was compared to um, what it is afterwards. So things to keep in mind if you're going to do this, um, you probably will want to do some kind of clear coat to try to restore. Um, the, the luster, at least in the pads, if not the whole body. All right, the second to last part is going to be this cowl here that we want to uh, take a look at. We know that it's uh, made of this purple plastic, 
and right now we have two colors and really the thing is that the idea is that we want to remove the shading but because this is gray and this is red. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna paint it black. I just have this matte black that I purchased from Michaels. Uh, it's acrylic. I don't think uh, it needs to be anything special. So I'll go ahead and link some uh, matte black acrylic below as well. But my plan is to just paint it in there and leave it at that. I will go ahead and use the, uh, the Tamiya masking tape as well around the neck just to make sure I don't mess up any of that. Okay, there's the neck masked off. See, I did my best. I Try to get all in there. There's the first coat of it. You can still see that the red is kind of coming through, but uh, again, it's just first coat. So I'm just doing a thin uh, coat with black. I'm going to give it a few minutes to dry. I'm going to go at it again. And you can see that obviously that taping it up was a great idea because I I definitely would have hit the neck if I didn't do that. Uh, the ball joint I don't care about because the head's going to go on the ball joint so um, you'll never see that but I definitely tape it up. So while that's drying we're going to take a closer look at the head. So in the head you can, can kind of see the blue on the hair and so I'm just going to try the same thing and I'm just going to hit that with some black. You can actually also see right here that the some of the paint came off and I suspect that's probably just because I probably touched it at one point while having the chemical my fingers so this is really more reason to just tape up the things that you don't want to have paint removed from just in case you mess up like me all right there's the head painted um, or at least the hair also went ahead and took a chance on fixing the part where I had the paint removed. That looks pretty good so far, um, but I'm going to let that uh, go ahead and also dry and we'll take a look at it after it's been fully dry. Second coat on, looking okay. You can still see a bit of red on the side, but what I'm actually gonna do is I'm just gonna use a cotton swab and go up the side of it right here, just on the front side of it. That's with it removed, so most of the red is gone. You can still see a slight line, but that line is more on the inside of it rather than on the front of it. Okay, here's our sinister head with the paint fully dried. You can see that it blends in perfectly fine. Uh, thankfully, black is just black. Um, and in this case, it, you can't tell that I painted it, which is great because I'm pretty terrible at painting. Okay, and here's our end result with Mr. Sinister Diesel Shader. I've gone ahead and removed the, the Tamiya tape and uh, you can see that this still got a little bit messed up and i think what happened is that even though i did tape it that as i had it this way that some of the liquid still got in and under the tape so i think i didn't do a good enough job taping that off so that one's on me however uh, i would say that it was a good idea to do because a lot of times as i was handling it i definitely put my hands over the chest a bunch of times just in the way of as i was holding it um, just kind of naturally as you're handling the figure, you're going to go over, you know, the main part of the body and that is right where that is. So I would still highly recommend using the, the Tamiya tape uh, to tape that off. Otherwise, uh, you can see it turned out okay. Um, a lot of the luster is gone in different parts of it. I still think that the legs still look the best out of all of this. Uh, the arms next. And then it's really kind of the torso and the pelvis and thighs that don't that didn't turn out so well. I think the head and the cowl part turned out really well with uh, painting it just black. 
And if that's all you're trying to do, then I think more power to you and go to do that. So there were definitely a lot of caveats uh, with doing this figure in particular. And if you are interested in seeing me uh, use the clear coat to try to bring the shine back to it, let me know in the comments. And otherwise, if you want to see a more successful uh, desal shading, then check out my Cyclops video over here.